Hi, I'm Ajay Sitaram, Cloud Architect here at Okta. Many organizations would like to use ServiceNow as a single pane of glass for all human approvals. In this sample, we illustrate how a user gets access to an Okta group by going through an approval in ServiceNow. Let me provide some context on the flow so that it will ease the setup. In Okta, we have a user that is in deactivated state, and we have a group named the Millennium Falcon group. Yes, I'm a Star Wars fan, so this is a Star Wars themed example. For the purposes of this diagram, I've called out Okta workflows as a separate component for the Okta Identity Cloud to provide clarity on the exact flow. The user activation event triggers the trigger ServiceNow approval workflow that goes ahead and uses the out-of-box card to create an incident in ServiceNow. It also creates an entry in an Okta table approval request with the incident number. Within ServiceNow, we have configured the incident page to have certain additional fields so that it makes it easy for us to approve the incident. And we have configured a ServiceNow business rule that triggers when that incident state is updated to be resolved. The action that is taken in that ServiceNow business rule is to call a ServiceNow REST message. The name of that ServiceNow REST message is important. It is the Okta workflow endpoint and is referenced within the ServiceNow business role. The ServiceNow REST message prepares the payload and calls the Okta workflow process resolution. The Okta workflow per process resolution is exposed as a webhook with an API endpoint. It updates the Okta table and adds the user to the group. It is important for this sample to work that you have a ServiceNow instance. The easiest way is to go to developer.servicenow.com, create an account, and get a free personal development instance. Once you create an account, you can actually spin up an instance. At the time of this writing, it is the Paris release. It is important to keep in mind that this instance needs to be continually refreshed, otherwise it is taken away. Now, within ServiceNow, you can go ahead to the any uh, incident to be able to configure the form design. It is important to note that there is a filter for incidents here, and there's a search capability. For this first part of configuring the form design, it doesn't matter which incident you use. You go ahead and you click into it. In the form design, you can drag and drop fields from the fields on the left onto this canvas and then update. Let me illustrate this with one field. So let's say we had to add the resolution code. So we would find that field and drag and drop it over. You would do this for resolution notes, resolution code, and the approval. We go ahead and save. And then you can close this and refresh the screen to make sure that your fields show up. Again, it is important to have a resolution notes, resolution code, and approval field added. 
The next part of the configuration in ServiceNow is to configure the business rule. Over here, make sure to check the one under System Definition. You would come here and click New. Let me go ahead and show you what a completed business rule looks like. So we would set the table to be the incident table. Uh, we would make sure to check the advanced checkbox. We would add a filter condition which says incident state is resolved. Check the update box. On the actions tab, we would set the field values of incident state to resolved, state to resolved. And then on the advanced, we would cut and paste the code for the business rule that has been provided. The code is really very simple. It just invokes the rest message of ServiceNow. And this is why the name is important, because it is referenced in this code. So when we name the rest message, we will call it exactly Octa Workflow Endpoint. It passes three parameters, the incident metadata, incident number, and incident state and it executes it. ServiceNow is pretty cool. It actually has a debugger that you can try to use for troubleshooting purposes if you're extending it. But let's get the basics. Now let's, the next one is the rest message. So we go to outbound rest message and create a new and again, this is where the name is important. So it should be Octa Workflow Endpoint. Let me look at a completed uh, REST message. So over here, the endpoint doesn't matter for this part. But then you have to create a new post operation. So you would go ahead and do something like this and put in the correct endpoint over here. You would submit and then go over to the HTTP request. You would add a couple of HTTP headers and you would add content here. And then submit and then come back and update. Let me go ahead and show you a completed one. So you go to Octa Workflow Endpoint, add an HTTP method of post. And this is the endpoint that you get from your Octa workflow when you turn it on and expose it as a webhook. You would put a content type HTTP header and you would put this content which is provided to you uh, as a part of the sample uh, into this box. You would add three variable substitutions. So incident metadata, incident number and incident state by clicking on this new button There's really no need for these test values, but it is interesting that ServiceNow, again, makes it really easy to be able to test your API execution, if needed, through a test run. But again, let's keep it simple. Let me show you where you get the uh, API endpoint uh, for the post operation. So I've got my user ready, but before I do that, uh, once I get the flows uh, in, I have to create a ServiceNow connection. I would use information from my ServiceNow personal development instance. So this would be a connection nickname, admin, the password, and the instance. And the instance is really just the uh, subdomain value as explained in the help card. So now let me go over to show you what the two flows are. One is the trigger service now approval. 
This is tied in with Okta and triggers based on a user activation event. We have hard-coded for the purpose of this sample to the Millennium Falcon group. We would adjust the uh, connection setting for the create incident card so that it can create an incident in ServiceNow and then point this to the approval request table so that it can create a row. The process resolution workflow points to the approval request table. Also, we have to put the group of the Millennium Falcon group here. And the easy way to get that is to just go to groups and grab the group ID from the URL. So that comes in over there. And then you turn the flow on. When you turn the flow on, you can come into the API endpoint settings, expose it as webhook, copy this URL, and bring it over here to your endpoint. In ServiceNow, you would make sure you update and save all this information. Okay, with that, let us go ahead and see this working end to end. Hans Solo is a deactivated user, does not belong to the Millennium Falcon group, but in order to get it, he needs to go through an approval process. So let me go ahead and activate the user here. Now if I come over to the syslog, I see that there is a user activation event. The user activation event triggers a workflow instance. It creates an incident in ServiceNow. So let me save that off so that I can easily find that incident in ServiceNow, and it creates a row in the Okta table. So if I were to come over to the Okta table and refresh the screen, you will see that this was the incident record that was created within approval requests. Now back in ServiceNow, I will click on all so that I can see all incidents. I will change my search criteria to search by number. And you can see that an incident has been created with the user, the group that is being requested, and the access approval request. So we can go ahead and approve this by setting some basic fields. It doesn't matter what the caller is set to. It doesn't matter what the exact value of the resolution notes is. It doesn't matter what the resolution code is. But the important field is to approve it and then click on resolve. So under the covers within ServiceNow, the business rule is triggered. That calls the rest message. And so when I come over here to process resolution, you can see that ServiceNow has called this API endpoint. It updates the approval request Okta table and then goes ahead and adds the user to the group. Looking at Han Solo, I can see that he was added to the Millennium Falcon group. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening.